You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. It would have been uh, alarming to the reasonable person. And I'm assuming some reasonable person saw that. Mass shooters are posting threats or violent content online ahead of attacking innocent people on a regular basis. This happened before shootings in Uvalde, Texas and Buffalo, New York in May. And the man facing felony charges in connection to the Highland Park shooting left clues online for months. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm McLeod Hageman. And I'm Jessica Coons. Jennifer is off tonight. In the weeks since the shooting on the 4th of July, we've been asking the state's top prosecutor, why aren't these hints being caught before the carnage? Target 3 investigative reporter Renee Cooper is with us. Renee, you sat down with the Attorney General this week. We did, Jessica, and we focused on what's now known about the 21-year-old who's accused of opening fire from a rooftop in a quiet suburb, killing seven and sending another two dozen to the hospital. Bobby Cremo's unusual interest in violence was visible online for months before that day. So why didn't this surface until after the shooting? And if police had seen these posts ahead of time, what could they legally do to step in and potentially prevent mass violence? Now, some of the video in this story may be disturbing. We're showing bits and pieces, not to glorify the alleged shooter, but to show you what, less than a month ago, was readily accessible to anyone online. Bobby Cremo was likely best known to his online followers as Awake the Rapper, an artist and alias who posted violent content. I hate when others get more attention than me on the internet. In one music video, he appears to act out a school shooting, and disturbing animations also seem to trace back to Cremo. One depicts a shooter, ultimately shot by police. I'm wondering with our technology why we're missing these warning signs, if there is any, I guess what resources would be needed to have been able to do that? Well, uh, you know, it, it all depends. You, you, you have uh, um, millions, if not billions, of data points out there. And so uh, while law enforcement certainly has a responsibility of being proactive, there's no way you can you can scan everything. Attorney General Kwame Raoul's office partnered with the National Threat Assessment Center, or NTAC, in 2019 to train teachers, administrators, and faith and other community leaders to spot the warning signs. If we simply focus on how to respond uh, to a mass shooting, we're missing the boat. We have to intervene. As the chief of the NTAC, Dr. Lena Alathari sits at the helm of mass shooting research conducted by the U.S. Secret Service. The latest report shows the most consistent commonality among attackers is threatening or concerning communication ahead of time. And I think a lot of it stems also from their motivation. So if you look at the number one motive of those who engage in mass attacks is some sort of grievance. And that's typically related to a grievance of a personal nature. They feel wronged. And so when they are online, they are looking for connection with others. They're looking for those who will give them praise. Dr. Alathari says some become so immersed, they almost believe they live in these violent depths of the online world. And eventually they start to have a grievance with the physical space and almost want to punish the physical space. And that sort of feeds into why they carry out a mass attack. The lines of reality are often blurred for those digesting the content even. So is it realistic to expect people who are on these sites to report those red flags? What I can tell you, Renee, from the data, they are most of mass attackers, when they are using these sites, they're usually typically uh, mainstream sites. And when imminent threats were posted there, research shows potential attacks have been averted. Some of them were stopped as they were on their way to school with a weapon. And when in those 67 cases, if you look at their planning behaviors, they were quite extensive. The Illinois Attorney General says based on what he now knows, if law enforcement had been made aware of Cremo's online activity, the state's red flag laws could have removed his gun rights. It was clear uh, sign to me that this person could be a, a dangerous person. Now, although some private companies have created data scraping services, there isn't a governor, governmental regulatory body that's overseeing the online world. And internet and data privacy laws 
haven't been penned since the 1990s. When asked, Raul told me the sites themselves hold some responsibility in continuing to feed young people more of the content they're already being negatively influenced by. And conversations are beginning to happen between attorneys general nationwide about the obligation of online platforms to self-police. Jessica, back to you. All right, Renee, thank you.